Hey guys, welcome back to the Hashraptor YouTube channel. Today we are unboxing the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti. This is the one that I picked up from Best Buy yesterday. It retails for $399 US. It's the lowest cost of the 3060 Ti's in the lineup that's launched recently. And before we open this thing up, let's do a quick rundown of the specs. So this is using Ampere architecture and second gen RTX. It's got a base clock of 1.41 gigahertz, a boost clock of 1.67 gigahertz, and 4,864 CUDA cores. Okay, I'm most excited to get this thing opened up and see what it looks like out of the box. So let's crack this thing open. Oh wow, check that out. That is, that is a really nice presentation on that card. Look at that. Really very, very slick. Kind of don't want to touch it. Okay, the first thing I notice right away when I'm taking it out of the case is the weight. And gosh, you can just feel the metal, the solidness of this card. I mean, this thing feels extremely solid right out of the box. Doesn't feel, you know, I've, I've talked about those plasticky GPUs in the past. This does not have that feel. This is heavy, it feels solid. I mean, heavy isn't great, but solid certainly is. And you can see the unique fin structure they've got here on this GPU, which helps with some cooling. It's a bit about design, but it does actually help with cooling. And if we flip this over, you can see we have an intake here on the back side, the heat plate. All right, so you can see right here, we've got three display ports, one HDMI, and the thickness on this card, this is gonna take up two slots. And the feel on this card is really incredible. I, I, I don't want to take it out of the box. I don't wanna to touch this thing. Feels like a, feels like a work of art. <laughs> Goodness. This is maybe the nicest feeling GPU out of the box that I've ever handled. Just extremely solid design. So I was just looking at this, check out this design right here. So you can see the grid, it's actually got screws right there that would allow you to remove that. And maybe that's for cleaning purposes, I don't know, but we're definitely gonna take a look at that here in the near future. All right, let's see what else is in the box. Warning, got our manual, support guide, and a quick start guide. Yeah, so we've got an eight pin to 12 pin adapter that comes in the box here. Very simple out of the box, a couple support guides. You've got the eight pin to 12 pin and that's it. All right guys, let's get this in a rig. Let's get it tested out. Okay guys, we are set up and ready to test. We've got our studio rig set up here. We're on our Zotac motherboard. We've got a gold 550 watt power supply that's gonna be powering this with a G3900. We've got our server power supply and our GPU power supply going into two different kilowatts. So just to do a level set here, our server power supply is gonna be powering the GPU and the riser, and it is going into the kilowatt label GPU and then the ATX power supply is going into the main kilowatt, which is measuring both. It's adding the system wattage to the GPU wattage and the riser, if you will. So that's all in. So the system plus GPU, that's everything that's all in. We're gonna do our initial testing here in Hive. 
I've got a new image set up on the studio rig here, but first I've got to shut it all down and we have to get this card installed. So let me get on that. Let me get it put in the frame here and we will be up and running here in just a second. All right, so what I did is I put the GPU over here so it's not sitting on top of this um, processor, which is blowing a little bit of hot air up. We've got the power supply blowing hot air up a little bit. So we're just moving it out of the way and let's get it connected. All right, so this is the first interesting test here. We're using our Nerd Gears server power supply breakout board and Nerd Gears cable. So we're not using an EVGA cable. And this is an eight pin. And we are taking that eight pin into the adapter, into the 12 pin here. So theoretically this should work, no problem. I gotta say, just because it's my card, I'm a little nervous about using this adapter with this power cable. I mean, it should work, right? It should work. Okay guys, just a friendly reminder, thanks to ChanCoin for bringing it up in a previous video that I put out. You need to update your NVIDIA drivers to 455 or above, which I just did. So we should be all set. We are gonna reboot this rig, and fingers crossed, everything will be set. All right, so we're at about 51 watts on the full system, 27 on the riser and the GPU and the server power supply, which takes a few watts itself. We are up, folks. We are mining. So let's see here. Hive's reporting 174 watts, and that's going to probably be um, at the GPU because that's what the GPU driver is reporting. And add, looks like maybe 15, 16, 17 watts for the riser. So it looks like Hive is reporting pretty accurate, and that's usually the case with NVIDIA. Okay, so let's do some tweaking on this here. We're at 52 mega hash. We'll leave our core clock at zero for now. Let's take our memory to 500, and let's bring our wattage down to 140. For those of you that are just getting comfortable with Hive, it does say power limit over here. That power limit is in watts. So it's absolute wattage there. It's not a percentage. All right, let's do a refresh. 53.56 mega hash. Bring our power limit. And do 125 watts. Bring our memory up to 1000. And we are gonna drop this core clock to 50 by that all right you can see the kilowatt there we're at 138 watts system with the motherboards at 158 159 we're running pretty efficient here all right it looks like we're at about 55.5 let's step this up a little bit more let's bring our memory to 1500 Let's leave our power where it is. We're going to go negative 250, 1500, and then 125 on the wattage. Apply that. Kilowatt still showing 138, 37. Iris reporting 125. Oh, there we go. All right, that just stepped up to 57.48 mega hash. All right, so we still have even more room to go, and we're at about 0.46 mega hash per watt, which is really solid from an efficiency standpoint. Really, really solid. I mean, that's already up there with the best GPUs we've had out and available. Bring this in a little bit more here. I'm gonna drop this to 120. Let's bring this to 17. 50. As I approach 2000 on the memory, I like to slowly <laughs> bring that up in increments because you're probably going to crash your rig at some point. Not always, but there's a good chance. 58.46 mega hash at 120 watts. Kilowatt showing 132 watts. All right, we got to get 60. Opening night, we've got to get 60 mega hash on here. Let's step this up again. Go to 
1900. So we've got 17 accepted shears so far. Oh, there we go. 59.05. We're so close to 60. So close. By the way, so that you all know, I've throttled some of these settings on certain cards. So I don't know what memory is with NVIDIA. It may be set to throttle at 2000. I don't know that for sure, but if you all happen to know, um, leave a comment below. But with AMD cards, I saw that it was definitely throttled on certain settings. So even though you thought you had set a higher, um, set a higher value, it would default to a lower value. It wouldn't change it. You would think that you were set at a higher value, but in actuality, what it implemented with the GPU was a lower value. And the only way you knew that was by playing around with it a little bit. You went and checked the miner, you could see what was happening there. Okay, well, let's push this memory a little bit further. Let's see if we can get to, why not? Let's try 2500. See if we can crash this card. 2500. Don't die. 71 accepted shares, 100%. Gonna take it. Oh, there we go. Look at that. 61. 61.1 mega hash. Let's reel in this power limit. Let's bring this back down to 120. And let's see if it makes a difference. Okay, there we go. 61.2. We only lost about 0.2 mega hash there. Dropping down 15 watts. We're starting to split hairs here. Still at 100% accepted shares. And let's take it to one. 20. All right, guys, we're going to call it there since this is just the initial opening night with this card. 61.2 mega hash, minus 500 on the core clock, 2500 on the memory. We're at 120 watts on the GPU, 132 with the riser, and the total system is at about 153 watts. Very, very impressed with this card. It's already my new favorite card. I haven't even broken down the stats or anything like that yet but um, yeah this 8 pin to 12 pin is working great the heat exchange on here is really solid i mean the temperature staying look at that 59 degrees celsius and um this back fan here so we're pulling we've got an intake coming in this way and we've got exhaust here now if you were building a rig out of these you would have another card here that would be pulling in this exhaust so you may want to think about that in your rig designs. You may want to set, like on those AAA wave frames, you may want to set some fans in the back and point them away from the rig instead of pushing across and then out the front. You may actually want to push, immediately grab that hot air and pull it away. That way you're not passing it from one card to the next. But man, really solid design. I really love this card. Amazing price point. <laughs> I'm, I'm just uh, I'm in love with this card so far. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna break all of this down I'm gonna put it in some spreadsheets. I'll get you the mega hash per watt. We'll pit it against other GPUs I can already tell you this is gonna be one of the top GPUs for mining in 2021, which is which is pretty exciting uh, With all of the other cards that are out there. They're super efficient considering the price point that you can get this at so all right, guys, well, that was a lot of fun. Uh, stay tuned for upcoming videos. We'll test other algorithms. We'll break this all down for you and kind of you know, tell you which are the best cards you should be buying in the rest of this year and into 2021. All right, we'll see you later, Raptors. Take care.